Ready? Yeah. I'd like to call to order the meeting of the Warrant Missouri Planning and Zoning Commission for June 6, 2024. Uh, this evening we have three public hearings uh, that will begin the meeting. Uh, the first of which uh, is the amendment to height limitations in C2, C3, and C4 zoning districts. And I'd uh, like to point out, uh, after these public hearings, we do have public comment time uh, in which any members of the uh, audience that would like to make any comments on any of the items on the agenda tonight will be able to do so. We do ask that you state your name. You'll come to the podium, state your name uh, and your address, uh, and you are limited to five minutes on the subject. After you make your comments, uh, the public uh, comments are closed and then we will go into the regular meeting at which time the Commission will discuss the matters on the agenda and move forward. So um, having said that, I would like to uh, start our first public hearing. Again, the amendment to height limitations in C2, C3, and C4 zoning districts, which is under consideration. And Mr. Burks, do you have anything for us on that? No. No? Okay. Do we have any other presentation? No, we will discuss it down in the, uh, in public, the bottom. This is in just the for pub the public okay. to come up All and right. make any comments. Um, our second public hearing is uh, tonight for the <coughs> amendment to Main Street Overlay District, ADM 138. And uh, nothing if the public would like to speak. I'm sorry? If any public would like yeah, to speak yeah, on would, it. Would any of the public like to make any comment on that at this time? All right, we see no comments on that. And then our third public hearing is the Hopewell Winery Conditional Use Permit, CUP 97. Anyone uh, wish to speak on that item tonight? Very good. We can close the public hearings. <clears throat> and now we will accept public comment, uh, beginning with the Dollar General Subdivision. That's SUBD 122. Do we have any public comments on that matter at this time? Yes, sir, if you'll step forward. Please state your name and uh, where you're from. My name is Jeff Briggs and I live at 2366 Santa Maria Court here in Warrington. Okay. And uh, I want to speak out uh, against placing the Dollar General. That would be the site plan, not the actual subdivision. The subdivision is taking the parcel and dividing it into two. So if you have anything on the subdivision, you can speak at this time and then we'll open it up for comments for the site plan for Dollar General next. And I'll sit down. Right. <laughs> we do, and, and as a matter of clarification, we have two items uh, that relate to the Dollar General proposal. The first of which is the subdivision, which deals with the actual physical property. And the second of which is the site plan. So do we have anyone that has any comments on the uh, subdivision question? Very good, okay, we'll close that public comment. Moving on to the Dollar General site plan SP-172, and I would imagine that Mr. <laughs> Griggs would like to speak with us. I'm back, I keep turning up. Uh, I wanna speak out against placing a Dollar General at the head of our neighborhood um, for a couple of reasons. I think first, um, we've already got a Dollar General in town, went two and a half miles away. Um, I don't think we want to aspire to be a community where we just keep putting in things for like low income um, purchasing. Um, Dollar General as a company, I think is a pretty poor company to bring more of into Warrington. Um, they have been brought up um, several times about their employment practices. Even their investor group, Vanguard Investments, has looked into their employment practices. So when you have an investor looking into how you run your business and how you treat your employees, I think that says a lot about the company as a whole. Uh, the second piece is just, like I said, what kind of community we aspire to be. Um, we've got a Dollar General in town. We're gonna build a school out here. Um, there's opportunity to do other things with our area and our land than to put in you know, another dollar store. Um, I don't think it's gonna help property values where I live. I don't think it's gonna help traffic in an intersection that's already difficult to get in and out of sometimes. Um, I just don't think it's the appropriate place for it. And that's what I wanted to say today. All right, Mr. Griggs, we appreciate your comments. Thank you. 
Is anyone else here that wishes to speak? Go ahead. <laughs> Come forward and uh, state your name and where you are from, please. Okay. Can you hear me okay? I do. I have an ear that I can't hear out of, so I'm sorry if I'm screaming or not talking loud enough. <laughs> Perfectly okay, fine. My name is Becky Cullum. I live on 2287 Page Marie Drive. And I'm just going to read what I have on my sheet because I'm not a good public speaker. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So... I felt it was important to come tonight and voice my opinions and thoughts on the new Dollar General being built off 47 and Isabella. I'm a fan of change and I welcome it into our city, but I do feel like it needs to be done in a good way. I personally am not a fan of the Dollar General being in this location or the plan for it at all. I think it'll be too much traffic on an already super busy street and neighborhood. I live back in Country Meadows and we try to keep our neighborhood nice and I think this could potentially put a damper on it. I think if this does get built in this location that the entrance needs to definitely not be off 47 or it needs to be off of 47 and not off of Isabella. I realize that's a state highway but they should also be involved in the project as well um, as far as traffic flow and in and out of subdivisions and stuff like that. Um, there are way too many vehicles turning in and out of Isabella all day and all night. I've spoken with many of our subdivision members and many of them are also against the Dollar General going in and of it being off of Isabella specifically. They don't want our nice neighborhood to have more traffic. I'm also concerned about the big 18-wheelers and other delivery trucks to the Dollar General. There's already a pothole issue as you turn into that subdivision off of 47, and they fix it from time to time, but then it comes back. So I don't think having extra traffic of the delivery trucks and you know that type of thing and extra people and cars and trucks on it will help it at all either. Um, I think it should be off 47, like I said before, especially if they're going to build the school and possibly apartments and other stuff up and down that, that little stretch between like the soccer field road and the road right before Andorra, if you're heading back towards town. Um, the, and I also think if they do build all that stuff out there, that they should probably have some kind of a turn lane going into the Dollar General or the apartments or the school or all that. And that might be in the works and I just don't know it, but it's something to be considered, I think. Um, also, one of my neighbors couldn't make it tonight because the meeting's at 6, and it's hard to get back in town by 6. So she said that they couldn't make the meeting, but they are a strong no on Dollar General, even building there at all. They said it will change the dynamics of our neighborhood. They also said they will be hard-pressed even getting into the neighborhood. The kids ride the bikes and play in the streets a lot in our neighborhood. Also commented that they didn't think that it would help our property value in the long run either. And then there were some other comments on our Facebook page for our subdivision as well I wanted to share. A lot of little angry face emojis got like punched so people weren't happy about it. Somebody said it's a horrible deal. Someone said put the entrance off of 47. We don't need another Dollar General. Someone said not a cool idea. And then someone else said we also have a school coming that way. It'll be more congested with a Dollar General too. So I'm just asking that we please don't put this entrance to be built on Isabella. It needs to go down further, farther on 47. And it would also be great if the building was as far back as it could be as well from Isabella, if possible. Um, and that's all I have to say. Thank you, Mrs. Cullen. Would anyone else like to make comment? All right, please come forward and state your name and your address, please. Bear with me, I'm a teacher. I can speak to five-year-olds all day long, <laughs> but adults are another story. <laughs> um, good evening. Thank you for giving us a voice tonight and letting us speak for our community. My name is Tammy Fortner. I live at 2187 Anthony Stephen Court. We've lived in Warrington and Country Meadows for over 17 years. Over those years, I've seen my fair share of bad decisions made for Warrington by the city, and I hope this won't fall into another one of those decisions. The citizens and what's best for them and the neighborhood need to be held in serious consideration and not just done in the name of progress and pocketbooks. The destructive proliferation and predatory tactics of dollar stores is getting out of hand and needs to be curbed. <coughs> Excuse me. We now have four Dollar Generals and one Dollar Tree within a 10 mile radius. There are many reasons why we should limit them. Let me list some of them. They have a long history of safety violations. They edge out locally owned businesses, especially grocery stores. They are an easy target for crime and violence. They target low income and fixed income families with sneaky pricing, ta pricing tactics and poor food quality choices. They have poor labor practices. They create and exasperate food deserts. They make roads more dangerous 
dangerous. They drive down property values. They extract wealth from the community. They have lax security and thin staffing. Their buildings are purpose-built and hard to reuse. They provide poor value to customers. They exasperate traffic congestion and safety problems. They reduce tax revenues. They create fewer jobs and pay lower wages than independent grocery stores. My biggest concerns for my neighborhood in particular are that they make roads more dangerous. They bring down property values and they're easy targets for crime, bringing strangers and those issues into my neighborhood where I live and my children play. Any employee or customer caught in Dollar Tree at the same time as the middle school lets out can paint you a picture of what happens there. A combination of kids gathering there and parents who don't want to get caught in the late line make a plethora of issues from crowd control, traffic issues, and theft. The approval of the building and the school across, across, directly across the street is just taking the same problems but moving them to the other side of the city. Along with the building of the school, the building of multifamily housing on the corner of the Dollar uh, and a Dollar General, the infrastructure is not able to handle this at this time. I was not able to find any studies or plans on traffic impact or how the road was going to get improved prior to the buildings of these things. Although the appeal of Warrington in the first place was the small town and the quietness that came with it, I'm not against progress. I think though that we have added things in the name of progress just to say we're doing it versus building with a purpose. Quantity over quality, when it should be the other way around. If we really want to make an identity for ourselves, we need to invest in independent businesses that provide quality jobs that will serve people's needs and therefore providing well-rounded support for our community. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fortner. Do we have any other public comments on the Dollar General site plan? Please come forward. Hello, I'm Tia Mingus and I live at 2401, which is lot one on the site plan. Uh, this would be building a Dollar General directly next to my house. My, the view from my kitchen would now become Dollar General. And that removes all sense of privacy and safety. And when I bought my home in 2019, I saw the farmland. I was never under the assumption that it would always remain farmland. I know things change, you know, something would eventually be built there but not the third Dollar General within 5.6 miles of my address. Anytime I drive by any other dollar store in the area, they have maybe three, four cars outside. <coughs> so they don't have so much business that they need a third location. There is no just reason to build a Dollar General like everyone else has stated. It would do nothing but drive down our property values. My house alone being directly next door, I am planning to move in the next three to five years. Who wants to buy a house directly next to a dollar store? Point, nobody. Especially if I'm trying to make my house good for the, a future family to make sure I don't sell to a hedge fund. And nobody's gonna wanna buy that, which would not only impact me, but all of my neighbors, let alone directly on my street, my neighborhood's direct, my neighbors directly next door have worked so hard on their property for it to be turned to a parking lot. I don't know, but yeah, I feel like they've done really well at kind of expressing everything. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I think that's it. <laughs> All right, thank you, Ms. Magnus. Do we have anyone else that wishes to make any comment tonight on the Dollar General site plan? Yes, sir, please step forward. Hi there, uh, thanks for allowing me to speak. My name is Joseph Yadamick. I live at 2352 Santa Maria. And uh, I'm not gonna say anything that these, that my neighbors haven't said already. They've made good points in, in cases. Um, they did good. Um, I moved here two years ago. I like Warrington. My wife likes it. We homeschool our children. We want to we want to stay within the community. Um, last night we were already discussing moving. That's I'm not going to eat up a whole bunch of time. Thank you, Mr. Vietnamica. Anyone else that would like to make any comment? 
ma'am. Hello, my name is Nicole Archer. I live at 2364 Santa Maria Court. I just want to reiterate um, basically what everybody else has stated about opposing the Dollar General. It does bring up crime. It lowers property value. You walk into the Dollar General now, it's, it's dirty. It's not far from our house. Um, people can drive. They can actually even walk. You see that we had all those new sidewalks built. They can walk into town. It, it's only 1.7, well, probably two miles from our house. It's not too far. And uh, it's just the road is busy. I mean, sometimes, especially when you get off work, People, you have to sit there for a long time. It's it's dangerous crossing. We do have a lot of children that play outside, and the as someone else has stated to the uh, the delivery drivers, big trucks coming through, not having enough space. Big trucks. That's known to. Um, tractor trailers that can crack foundations and wear out road work as well. So there will have to be more maintenance there as well. And basically that's all I really have to say that I oppose the Dollar General. Thank you, Ms. Archer. Is anyone else here to have uh, any comment? Yes, ma'am. I'm at 2362 Santa Maria Court. Can you step uh, closer to the microphone so we'll be able to hear you on uh, the oh. tape, Amy please? Amy 2362 Santa Maria Court. Okay. I'm also opposing the Dollar General, and I just, on top of everybody else's statements, I just want to reiterate, why would we give a company a second chance of a second location when their current location is hardly maintained as it is? So why give them another opportunity to come into our town? Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Christy Barrett. I live at 2352 Balboa Circle, and I am also opposed to the Dollar General, um, mainly because of the traffic that it's going to bring in and more people into our little <clears throat> area with our children playing. I don't have children that are small anymore, but I worked for the school district for many years and I have, you know, I've got a grandchild on the way and it terrifies me that they may be playing and they big old tractor trailers coming down the road. Um, I just don't think that it's a good idea for us and my property value as well. Thank you, Ms. Barrett. Anyone else that has any comments on the site plan for Dollar General? All right, we will close the public comment then on the Dollar General site plan. Our next public comments will be regarding the Hopewell Winery Site Plan SP-173. Anyone here to give comment on that proposal? All right, we'll close that public comment. And finally, our final public comment for the evening is on the Park Hills Boundary Line Adjustment SUBD-123. Is there anyone here that has any comment for us on that? All right, we will close the public comments then on our agenda items for this evening and move on to the first item on our agenda, which is the uh, approval of the minutes from the April 4, 2024 planning and zoning meeting. You've all had a chance to see those and review them. Do you have any comments, uh, corrections? Make a motion to approve the minutes from the March 7th. I'll second that. All right, we've got a motion by Mr. Cornell and a second by Mr. Cooper to approve the minutes as uh, from the April 4th meeting as presented. Any other comment? All right, then uh, we'll move on to a roll call vote. Mr. Durbin? Yes. Mr. Cooper? Yes. Mr. Dieterman is absent. Mr. Cornell? 
Yes. Mrs. Cullum? Yes. Ms. Madden? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Costello? Yes. Mr. Cullum? Yes. And Mr. Barton is absent. All right, that motion passes uh, eight to zero with two absent. Our next uh, item on the agenda is the amendment to height limitations in C2, C3, and C4 zoning districts, AMD 137. So you've had uh, opportunity to review the material in the packets and we're ready for discussion. Mr. Burks, do you have anything to present right now? Yeah, this is the um, amendment to raise the height from three feet and uh, 35, I mean, three stories, 35 feet to four stories, 45 feet in the um, C2, C3, and C4 uh, commercial zoning districts. Uh, public hearing notice was posted in Warren County record on 523 of 2024. That's all I have, unless you have okay. questions for me. All right. And do we have questions or comments from the commission? Basically what we discussed in the work session, correct? Correct, yes. I'll make a motion to approve the updates to section 405.14 as displayed and discussed. Second. Uh, we have a motion by Mr. Cullum and a second by Mr. Cornell to recommend approval of the amendment to height limitations in C2, C3, and C4 zoning districts as AMD 137. Any other comments or questions? All right. Just, I, I'm yes. disappointed that the motion wasn't to raise the roof, but... <laughs> 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 oh, oh. Uh, Mr. Cornell. The ceiling they raised. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think we'll just take a roll call vote. Mr. Cooper? Yes. Mr. Cornell? Yes. Mrs. Cullum? Yes. Ms. Madden? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Costello? Yes. Mr. Cullum? Yes. Mr. Durbin? Yes. All right. That motion uh, carries by a vote of 8 to 0 with two absent, and we'll go to the Board of Aldermen at their next meeting. What is the date of that meeting? June 18th. June 18th. All right. Uh, we now have uh, item three, amendment to the Main Street Overlay District, ADM 138. Mr. Burks, can you bring us up to speed on that? And this is just to uh, readjust um, amendments to the <laughs> Overlay District that we currently have in place that was discussed earlier. Um, public hearing notice was posted in Warren County Record on um, 23rd, 2024 on that one. So. We've all had a chance to review. Um, what other comments or questions might we have? Believe it or not, I don't have any questions. My comment would be, I think that um, this was drafted very well um, in line with all of our discussion. I, I think that you guys did a really good job of, of uh, Putting that together and it, Thank you. it adequately reflects what we discussed. What other comments or questions might we have? Make a motion to uh, approve the requested uh, updates and amendments to section 405.195 overlay zoning districts. Second. We have motion by Mr. Cullum, second by Ms. Madden to recommend approval of the amendment to Main Street Overlay District ADM 138. Any other questions or comments? Roll call vote. Mr. Cornell? Yes. Ms. Cullum? Yes. Ms. Madden? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Costello? Yes. Mr. Cullum? Yes. Mr. Durbin? Yes. Mr. Cooper? Yes. All right, that motion carries by a vote of eight to zero with two absent and uh, as well will be brought before the Board of Aldermen for their June 18th meeting. Uh, item number four is the Dollar General Subdivision, and uh, this deals with the actual property uh, itself. Mr. Burks, what can you tell us here? This is a uh, DG Partners LLC has submitted an application for a preliminary slash final record plat for the 7.3 acres um, on the east side of Highway 47 north of Isabella Drive. The preliminary plat application is to create two new commercial lots and has been submitted with the final record plat. The subject site is Zone C2, General Commercial District. Um, a preliminary plat is the first step in subdividing a property. The plan shows a preliminary design of two lots. Lot one is 2.13 acres, 
and a site plan application has been submitted with the proposed general uh, Dollar General store. Lot two is 5.16 acres and will be left vacant for now. Uh, the plans show easements requirements to provide municipal service to the lots in the future. Uh, the record plat is the final step in the process of uh, subdividing the property. Once the plan is approved and the plan is recorded, the proposed lot configuration will be finalized. The final record plat has been submitted with the preliminary plat as permitted by uh, city code. Uh, this uh, project lines up with the comprehensive plan. Um, the staff analysis, further uh, development and subdivision of a larger track will require a submission of a new preliminary plat showing the proposed lot configuration and utility service to the proposed subdivision. Uh, preliminary stormwater indicates most of the site drains northeast and there is plenty of green space for the water to slow down and uh, apparently infiltrate uh, stormwater. The final determination of the uh, contribution to the stormwater management improvement fund will be made in conjunction with the stormwater management plan. Uh, staff has reviewed the preliminary slash final record plat and found the proposal is consistent with chapter 405. The zoning regulations are warranted in the municipal code. All items and notices have been provided and completed as state and local law require. That's all I have. Uh, the engineer for this project is here. I can answer any question. I think he has a um, presentation. No, I'm sorry, not for, for this, but for the, the site plan. But the engineer is here. He can ask any, answer any questions you might have on this part. Mr. Burks. I have a quick question for the zone. Is Are we rezoning or is it already zoned commercial? It's already zoned. Okay, thank you. It's just subdividing the the property into two lots. I a, I, I've got a question also, um, and, and it's more along process. We've got the subdivision and then we've got the site plan. Yeah. Um, the site plan certainly brings up a lot of questions and concerns in my mind okay. that may may be remedied by relo relocating. I, I guess my question is, we're going to subdivide this, but if the recommendation is that the building either have access on 47 or if the building be moved further into this overall um, could the subdivision if I, am I getting across at all what I'm saying you're so I guess my I, I, I have the same separate. question yeah sorry I have Go the ahead. same question just let before you answer I have the same question but I think the more the the, the follow-up question is can we, should we be reviewing the site plan first? Because there might be changes. No, no, right? Because this is what's submitted. Right. So, okay. so there's two separate issues before you that really stand on their own, right? Okay. So in theory, it, it, if you determine that the plat complies with the code, um, and then if you think changes are needed to the site plan that, that would necessitate a change to the plat, well, they would have to come back and change the plat. Um, but but they are they stand on their own. They are separate. So the, and, and I know it's for the same property, but you have to treat them as separate. Historically, we have done them as two separate, and there's even been variance between the site plan and the um, dividing of a specific plot, and that, that's the reason why we do it in two different sections. So it's not all bundled into one. Yeah, I, kn I knew why we did it. I I wasn't sure the order here, but um, yeah, okay. approval of the. Uh, subdivision doesn't presuppose uh, approval of anything that follows right they okay. are separate so but what we're looking at right now is just the splitting up that property into two separate properties correct, correct. and no zoning change just the split up okay have any other questions other comments I'd make a motion to approve the subdivision. I'll second that. We have a motion by Mr. Cornell, second by Mr. Cooper, to recommend approval of the Dollar General Subdivision SUBD 122. Any other questions or comments? Roll call vote. Ms. Cheryl Cullum? Yes. Ms. Kelly Madden? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Costello? Yes. Mr. Cullen? Yes. Mr. Durbin? Yes. Mr. Cooper? Yes. Mr. Cornell? Yes.
All right, that motion carries by a vote of eight to zero. We'll come before the Board of Aldermen on <coughs> the June 18th meeting. Now we have the, uh, the follow-up on this particular property, which is the Dollar General Site Plan SP-172. And um, so I'm sure there will be questions and uh, observations to be made there. Who would like to begin? I guess Mr. Birch, you want to go ahead? Okay. The uh, DG Partners LLC has submitted a site plan application for approval of the 2.13 acres on the east side of Highway 47 north of Isabella Drive. The site plan shows construction of, of a one-story uh, 10,640 square foot Dollar General store. Uh, Appendix A of the zoning code shows the retail store is permitted in C2 uh, general commercial district with uh, the subject site is which the subject site is currently zoned. Um, the area south of the site uh, subject site is C2 also. The area to the north has been rezoned to a PUD, a plan unit development and the area across uh, east or behind it on the east is zone R3 residential. The land to the west sub of the subject site is unincorporated and not located in the uh, city of Warrington. Now we did have a meeting with a uh, representative from the Dollar General during this review process and they have moved the Dollar General back to the corner and up a little bit to the east of the have an east northeast section of that parcel to get the driveway further away from Highway 47. Uh, we had concerns with traffic issues. If a semi was going to make a right turn in there, um, the entrance was closer to 47. That truck would be stopped and block traffic on 47 from turning onto Isabella. So they have made some changes to move that back to get the entrance closer um, or farther away from Highway 47. So that was the only changes that were made. Uh, they do have a vinyl um, fence that's going to run on that east side uh, along with the trees there as a, as a buffer. Um, that's about it on that. The staff has reviewed the site plan and found the proposal is consistent with Chapter 405. A zoning regulations of Warren and Municipal Co. All items and notices have been provided and uh, completed as state and local law requires. Do you have any questions for me? I have a quick question. Um, and I wasn't here on pre like when we had other properties on 47. Was the was the traffic study before or after usually uh, done? The traffic study was done on the PUD uh, that's going in because uh, I think it's close to 250 units up there. So a traffic study was done and they were required to put in a, um, a turn lane, uh, but that was up to MoDOT on that. Would it be a similar process if for this property? I don't believe so. I don't believe that this property or Dollar General is going to draw the traffic as uh, 260 housing units uh, that's going to be located on, on the corner there at 47 and Hickory Lake. Okay, thank you. One of my uh, initial thoughts and concerns was commercial development no, number one it's pushed kind of as far east as possible we've got plenty of green space up buffering against 47 um, but that pushes it up against um, these residences um, the other the other thing that struck me is we've got a nice two-lane highway running right in front of this yet we're accessing it off of this residential street um, uh, <coughs> we're even facing the building to 47, which makes sense marketing-wise. But we're not entering off of 47, which seems logical. It's going to be make less of an impact on the residential. Um, for safety's sake, <coughs> uh, that doesn't make sense to me. Sure. 
Um, so, uh, uh, my name's Tom Burke. I'm with uh, Premier Design Group, uh, 100 Midland Park Drive in Wentzville. Uh, I'm the civil engineer for this project, and um, yeah, just wanted to introduce myself. Um, so yeah, I've uh, been working with uh, Tim on this project, and as, as he mentioned, we we moved. We had to basically move the entire parking lot and building to the east uh, to allow more space for that entrance of Isabella and unfortunately any any commercial property or any property at all that gets put on this corner would not have access from Highway 47 because of MoDOT standards it's too close to Isabella so you physically you you can never have an entrance from Highway 47 What's into that, that into that corner uh, it is uh, so this is this is a state MoDOT requirement correct Yes. Yeah. So uh, the MoDOT requirement uh, on this type of road is uh, 330 to 440 feet distance from another intersection. Certainly, certainly the, the thought process here is with the subdivision that at some point that piece to the north will be developed and it will require access off of 47. Yes. Which this property owner already owns. So I guess my question is, while, while you may not be able to get access to 47 on this subdivided piece, certainly you could try and get access off of 47 on the, the overall piece. Yeah, but <clears throat> for, for a commercial property at this corner, that it'll, there will never be a commercial property at this corner if the only entrance they have is 400 feet down 47. Does that make sense? I know what you're saying, but it doesn't make sense. I see plenty of times okay. where there is an entrance and then uh, an entrance off of 47 and then an access going north and south across this entire seven acres feeding <clears throat> those. So I've seen that okay. plenty of times. Okay. Um, so you're, at, you're what you're saying is like two two entrances essentially, right? One is that what you're talking about? I'm trying to visualize what you're talking about. What I'm yeah. talking about? Yeah. No, I my uh, my concern is having access to this property off of that residential street where there is possible access from a less intrusive location on Highway 47 and just makes more sense. Um, I know that that, again, that entrance may be farther down uh, than desired, but it certainly would still give access to this, uh, this property and this development. So instead of for Isabel, like, Correct. One, then you have an Correct. extra, okay. So not in addition, Correct. but Eliminate this. It would be an alternative. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, Question. Mr. Cornell, I think your point is it actually raises, uh, in my mind, the fact that this is a self-inflicted yeah. limitation. Were we not subdividing the property, you don't need to come in off of Isabella. So you present to us a request to subdivide, create the issue that forces uh, the need to come in off of Isabella because there's not enough Highway 47 frontage uh, according to MoDOT standards, yet if we don't subdivide the property then we can come in off 47 without an issue. And I've been on this commission for a long, long time, but I can see what's going on here. Uh, sir, sir, I could, I, sorry to interrupt, I could say that that was not intentional. That's, that's the city's well, process. That's, I don't believe you. Okay. I don't believe you. Can you tell me what other Dollar General's DG partners operates locally? Um, I don't know specifically. I know there's several, you know, a few in the area as the residents here have mentioned. Um, you know, we're, I'm, I'm a civil engineer. I don't work for Dollar General. So I I'm, I'm a site you out, planner. They sent you out to, to do the, uh, the presentation. I get that. Um, I was on this commission when the Dollar General we have in Warrington was brought forward. And uh, are you familiar with that one? No, sir. Okay. 
so it's located on Highway 47 in the heart of town, in the kind of the old part of uh, town that runs between Interstate 70 and Main Street. So at the time that Dollar General came in with their proposal, and this is, this is really for everyone's information more than anything else. Um, the proposal came in and was for a metal clad building. At the time, the Planning and Zoning Commission, some of the commissioners that were on, uh, felt like a metal clad building at that location in that part of town was not consistent with the architecture and the other, uh, the other businesses and structures in the area. So we requested that the developer, and I don't know if it's DG Partners in this case or not, uh, we requested that the developer come back with a redesign to use brick which they did, and they came in with drawings of a very attractive brick building uh, that would look similar in color and uh, architecture to uh, Jonesburg State Bank, which was directly across, or is directly across Highway 47 from it. Ultimately, the Planning and Zoning Commission recommended approval, and the Board of Aldermen at that time also agreed. And so the building was built, and it was built with red brick, and it looked nice. Until one Saturday morning, paint crews showed up and painted it. And I will never believe that that wasn't an act of deception on the part of those developers. And if you look at that building right now, paint is flaking off of it. Uh, the mortar is cracked. You can see the cracks in the mortar lines, and it is an eyesore in the middle of our town. And so I have no interest whatsoever in trusting that the next Dollar General is going to be an asset in our community. And I don't know what the rest of the commission thinks, but I think these people here tonight have made a very uh, strong argument on what the quality of life will be like if this goes forward. And I think we should take that into account. That was one of the things that I had on my list. I believe that, if nothing else, out of consistency, I think that when we approved, back up, I wasn't here. When Casey's was approved, it went into a tight spot in a residential area, backing up to homes. And uh, I believe the insistence was that that was bricked all the way around. So uh, I, I, that was gonna be one of my recommendations, conditions, suggestions. Um, I, I, I'm against this for no other reason. I feel as strongly about uh, the previous development, but without knowing if these are the same players, that's neither here nor there. I think there's a, a safety issue. I think it could turn into a um, traffic safety issue onto 47. Um, so as this is proposed with access off of I keep saying the residential street. What's the street name? Isabella. Isabella. Off of Isabella. I, uh, as you uh, spoke uh, better than I am, I have, it, it's a self-inflicted issue. Um, so if, uh, if this was presented um, with access off of 47, I think we still have a lot of questions. But as long as it's accessing off of Isabella, it's, I don't have a question at all about it. I think that the, the concerns are valid in, I mean, I live in that area, so I understand traffic. I mean, trying to go there outside, I live on Ashland Meadows, so it's not far away, but trying to get out of that highway in the morning to go to work when you've got school buses and there's going to be school. More school buses. There's going to be more school traffic that comes to <coughs> with school buses. I mean, we have to consider, you know, we're, we're saying part of the MoDOT requirement was you can't be too far off, too Ms. close Cullen, to the highway. Sorry. If you could speak into the microphone, that'd be oh, awesome. Oh, sorry. <laughs> My screen is over here. Let me closer. Um, if, if the MoDOT requirement is because you're too close to the highway, but you've got enough property to cover for the distance, I mean, why not have an entrance? And your concern is, the concern is still traffic, but we already have a traffic, like, in congestion there. Same, similar similar concerns with the school coming. Um, yeah, I, I understand your point. Um, 
And as I said, you know, in, in the process, um, the owners, you know, our, our first plan was closer to the road. And, you know, I, I agreed that that was, that was too close. We moved it back and it leaves space for about eight to 10 cars to, to stack while waiting at 47, while also leaving space for a tractor trailer to turn in there. I know there's some other points brought up about uh, tractor trailer traffic into the neighborhood, but the, that's not necessary because it, it just goes into the entrance and then back out to the highway. Um, that's just one, one point that I wanted to make um, uh, regarding the public comments. Um, there was a few other ones. Um, so I know s some people had mentioned, you know, the proximity to uh, to their homes, and um, yeah, I understand that. Um, you know, unfortunately, this is this is zoned as a C2 uh, property. We're we're following the city's you know future land use, and um, so I, I think that you know I think that the board sh you know should take that into account because you know everything we've presented here is you know within the city code. And uh, we've also added quite a bit of landscaping and the six foot vinyl fence uh, on the north and the east side of the property. As you can see in the landscape plan, there's quite, quite a bit of landscaping, um, larger trees that would block, you know, the view of that building. Um, but I guess, you know, I guess the, the biggest point is that, you know, this is a commercially zoned property in a smaller retail building like this is going to command much less traffic than say, you know, uh, a drive through restaurant or something like that. That would, that would generate some serious traffic and this is much, much more minor compared to that. So that's um, just a few comments that I have. And one other thing I would like to, to say is that uh, there was, there was no, no deception at all from our part, there was no, you know, no conversations had about subdividing versus the site plan and which order that would happen. A lot of these meetings that I go to, it happens at the same time, so that you know you don't have that problem. So I had no no idea what you know what was being voted on, in in what order. Just to clarify. Well, I don't think that I, I and and if <clears throat> if you take it as as though I think you personally are. Right creating the situation I do not. Uh, however, whoever owned that property wants it divided for a reason. And uh, in the absence of the subdivided two parcel lot, that C2 zone seven acre parcel doesn't need to have an entrance off of Isabella. Um, and it was zoned C2 before it was divided into two small, smaller parcels. So the fact that it was zoned C2 doesn't necessarily indicate that it was zoned C2 with an intention of one much smaller parcel to be used for commercial retail and accessed off of Isabella, in my opinion. But I do apologize if, if, um, if my comments made you feel like uh, you personally were the one who was responsible for the manner in which this has been done. But I stand by my remarks that this is a self-inflicted uh, obstacle. Understood, thank you. Do we have a, um, do we have a recommendation f for moving forward? Well, as a point of order, um, please remember anytime we make a recommendation, we always make the motion in the affirmative, regardless of whether or not mm -hmm. we intend to support it. So uh, anyone who chooses to make the motion, please remember the motion should be in the affirmative and then everyone votes according to what their opinion. Well, let, let me ask the lawyer, is that, true? Is well, that accurate? Well, do we have to do it in the affirmative? Yes, but what the affirmative means is, is not necessarily a motion to approve. A motion to deny is an affirmative motion. All right. But what a, a negative or a non-affirmative motion would be a motion not to approve, right? That's what's confusing. But, but you can make a motion to deny that is an affirmative motion and that it's affmatively stated and there is no negative in there. Does that make sense? Yes. Thank, Thank you, you for, for the that. education. Thank you. Yeah. I will. I will make said motion to deny. I will second that motion. Right, we have I make a comment before we vote. Oh, I'm sorry, Gary. Yeah. Yep. Yes, Go sir. ahead. Uh, Mr. Costello uh, mentioned the uh, issues 
uh, I was on the Board of Alderman uh, Council when they first came into town and there were stipulations. One was the issue of the brick surrounding. Another issue was there will be no merchandise set out in front of the store. Well, that was fine and dandy for a short period of time. Uh, I can assure you now there will be merchandise out in front of the building. Uh, so I've been less than cooperative in, in using our recommendations as a part of our approval at that time. So uh, it doesn't sit that well with me. So that's my problem. That's my opinion. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Thank you. Uh, so we have a motion by Mr. Cornell, a second by Ms. Madden. And uh, if we have any further comment or questions, you can offer that now. I just want to add um, part of the, re I felt we have a community that came together to voice their stance and I stand by, I represent my community. So, you know, whatever decision that we propose here is because I, I do hear the community and I stand by representing our community for the best of our, you know, for, for our city. Thank you, Mrs. Cullen. Any other comments or questions? Roll call vote. Ms. Kelly Madden. This is a this is a motion to deny, correct? Yes, yes. it is. All right. Yep. So if I say yes, that means I am Motioning saying yes to deny. To deny. Yes. yes. <laughs> Mr. Right. Miller? Yes. Mr. Costello? Yes. Mr. Jason Cullum? Yes. Mr. Durbin? Yes. Mr. Cooper? Yes. Mr. Cornell? Yes. Ms. Cullum? Yes. All right. That motion to deny the uh, site plan uh, carries by a vote of eight to zero with two absent and will come before the Board of Aldermen. They have the ultimate final uh, determining vote on the matter and so anyone that has interest in this uh, that will be uh, June 18th at the Board of Aldermen meeting. All right, we will move on now to the Hopewell Winery Conditional Use Permit CUP 97 and the Site Plan SP 173. Mr. Burks, please tell us about that. Hey, uh, Jeremy Wobbles has submitted an application for conditional use permit and a site plan for a building on the north side of East Boonslick Road on the east of Northeast Street at 209 East Boonslick Road. The building is currently zoned C2 General Commercial. The applicant plans to use a portion of the building uh, at, as a uh, past restaurant as a proposed winery slash restaurant. The applicant is, is proposing to open the winery first and then the restaurant. The restaurant is permitted use in the C2 General Commercial District and the Appendix A defines bar, tavern, nightclub as a conditional use. A uh, future land use plan designate the subject site as a mixed use. Um, staff has reviewed the conditional use permit and the site plan and found the proposal is consistent with Chapter 405 of the zoning regulation of the Warrington Municipal Code, all items and notices have been required by, uh, it have, has been required by state and local laws. Uh, the applicant should be here tonight to answer any questions. Uh, so this building was the old uh, Blue Anchor building. So. The old Brewski's building. <laughs> <laughs> Brewski building. <laughs> what is this? It's oh it's the God. was Blue Anchor. Uh, it's on Bing oh, Street, right? Yeah. Like right the, there, the yeah. picture. Yeah. See the like picture? Look at the picture. Yeah. Oh, there and it is. Brewski's <laughs> way back when. Yeah. I don't know if I was here when it was Brewski's. How are we? Good. We are fine. What's yeah. your name? Yeah. Uh, Jeremy Wombles. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Right. Not associated with Dollar General. <laughs> <laughs> Just to be clear. <laughs> Just to be clear. But yeah, uh, if you have any questions. Um, All right. Well, have at it, everyone. Um, I do. Where's the picture again? Uh, so it says it's a winery and a restaurant. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, Winery first. What does that mean? So, um, 
originally that's how uh, I envisioned it starting out, but um, going through due process, uh, we're probably not going to look at opening until September of o or October. So we'll probably open um, the the winery and the restaurant at the same time there. Um, so, uh, and and um, I've done this since 2007. Uh, so I have another location. Um, what I'm looking at is uh, uh, a tasting bar inside, and then further in uh, is seating for the for the restaurant customers. So I'm, I'm there's a restaurant in St. Peter's that I'm thinking about. Uh, what is the name? Of it? Um, it's it's not us. <laughs> so. I know, but is it gonna like is so their layout, I'm trying to remember how their layout is. So in oh, their layout. Sure, yeah, so, so with our layout, uh, when you walk into the entrance, uh, the first thing that, that you will come upon is uh, the tasting room. Okay. Uh, and then from there, um, if, 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 if you don't desire to uh, taste wine, uh, sample wine, then uh, we'll seat you and yeah, so in that in that setup, they have the entrance. They have like a on this side, they have like a tasting. And there's some yes. like mix, and whatever. And, and then we'll on this side, they have like I don't know restaurant. They they host whatever, whatever. Is is in in this layout? You're saying in the front would be the tasting, and then you'll have like the restaurants in the back. It, correct. Okay. Yeah. Hard right, to see with the. Visualization. Yeah. So, <laughs> so pretty I have much to like kind of reimagine. Yeah. Pretty much like the old Brewskis was. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is a uh, uh, two-story building. Three. Uh, three. Or story. three. Three but, story. Uh, yeah. You go in the main entrance in front. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then what will be in the lower level down below? Uh, well, that. That is the that is the first level. Uh, the the second and third story right now, um, I have no plans to do anything with. Um, I um, I don't like in the in the near future. I don't foresee renting it out. Um, I've never uh, dabbled in um, rentals before. Um, so that's something that I would need. It's more of a two-year, three-year plan to to look at possibly renting bed and breakfast, what have you. What's so the gentleman that had it this last time after Brewski's, uh, he had below, I call it basement. Or okay, yes, whatever. in the basement. Uh, that's where he had a... Uh, food bar and okay. you get your food and then you walk up the steps see for seating upstairs or not upstairs but on the level where you come in okay um, so yeah I don't know what their setup would have you're not going to be yours no no, no everything's on the first floor yeah What's your the floor meaning one uh, if you're coming in through the front if you're coming from the patio, let's say, you're talking about that. Okay. Go down the stairs. Okay. You're, you're talking about that being That's, your. Yeah, yeah, your food. Yes, area. now, yeah. Pretty correct. much That's exactly like, like the. Like correct. The yeah, uh, the, and and the patio, uh, we plan to keep the patio area closed unless um, you know, it, it's it's just for handicapped accessibility and that's it. Um, otherwise, the the plan is to everybody enters through the front door. I hate to hear you're keeping the patio closed. I spent many a night on the patio. Oh, no, no, no. We, we will have the patio open. Yeah. Uh, we just the access. Play, yeah, access. we, we access, access from right, the right. front door and go from there. Yeah. Correct. That's correct. What's your capacity yeah. estimate for? Yeah. Uh, 60. 60 guests. You can see 60. That, that, that is the plan. Yes. What about? Your, uh, what hours do you envision, days and hours of operation? Uh, currently, we're looking at uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sundays. Um, I, I would expect that uh, Friday and Saturdays will be um, roughly 11 to about 8 o'clock. 
and then Sunday is probably going to be like noon to six, noon to seven. Um, I have uh, no aspirations to stay open later than that. Uh, we don't do that currently at, at, at the winery that I have. Um, wineries are just not a late night establishment. Right. And Live music? Uh, occasionally. Um, maybe one, you know, one person type band. Yeah. Um, it's more intimate, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And, and more than that, it gets loud and um, disrupts the residents and um, nobody needs that. Is the, the the front the exterior? Um, are you changing anything at all with the exterior, or is it going to be the same? Or what? What's your what's the? Vision? So I have made some changes already. Um, uh, it's just some landscaping changes to it, but um, there uh, like n uh, builds. No, I I plan to have no builds whatsoever. Okay. So it's a facelift, really. Yeah, yeah, and we've we've done our facelift on it already. I've got to ask, where is your other establishment and what's the name of it? Uh, Hopewell Winery. And it is, uh, if, if I don't know if you know where Louisiana, Missouri is. Oh, I've been to Louisiana, Okay, Missouri. so we are just right across the river on the Illinois side, uh, heading towards Pittsfield on Highway 54. And I'm sorry, what was the name of it? Hopewell Winery. Hopewell Winery. Yeah. Okay. Same. You have a name picked out for this? We're going to keep the same name down here. Yeah, Hopewell Winery. Yeah, Any I'm, other questions? I make a motion to approve. I'll second it. We have a motion by Mrs. Collum, second by Mr. Durbin, to recommend approval of Hopewell Winery conditional use permit CUP 97. Is it appropriate to do both in the same motion? Uh, or do we need separate motions? Do separate motions because All right. Conditional use could requires one. So. Okay. All right. So um, I presume that your motion, Ms. Collum, is for the conditional use permit. Yes. All right. Correct. Okay. Uh, any other questions or comments on the conditional use permit? Roll call vote. I do have oh. one. I do have one question or concern. So, as we approve this, we're approving it based on. Um, his stated business model, hours of operation, but we're not putting any conditions in that. Looking forward, if he were to sell this business, do anything else, have we lost any control on what, what comes in later, what hours they operate, what... You mean for a business other than a winery? Yes, would a bar fit fit under that? Not uh, under the winery okay. CUP. Okay. So you wouldn't have to get revisited anyway, correct? If they if they sold and someone else came on and the use was a different conditional use, then that would come back to you. Okay. That would if be it was right. a permitted use, obviously it would not come back unless they needed a site plan. Okay. Got it. Thank you. All right, any other questions or comments? Now we'll have a roll call vote. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Costello? Yes. Mr. Cullum? Yes. Mr. Durbin? Yes. Mr. Cooper? Yes. Mr. Cornell? Yes. Ms. Cullum? Yes. Ms. Madden? Yes. All right, that motion carries by a vote of eight to zero with two absent and will come before the Board of Aldermen on June 18th. And we have, of course, the site plan SP-173, which is uh, obviously the related uh, details on the business and what it looks like. Do we have any other questions on this one? Make a motion to approve the site plan 173 for Hopewell Winery as displayed and discussed. Second. A motion by Mr. Cullum, second by Mr. Cornell to recommend approval of the Hopewell Winery conditional use permit site plan 173. Any other questions or comments? Roll call vote. Mr. Costello. Yes. Mr. Cullum? Yes. Mr. Durbin? Yes. Mr. Cooper? Yes. Mr. Cornell? Yes. Yeah. Ms. Cullum? Yes. Ms. Madden? Yep. Yeah. Mr. Miller? Yes. And that motion carries by a vote of 802 absent and comes before the Board of Aldermen June 18th. And finally, our last item on the agenda is the Park Hills Boundary Line Adjustment, SUBD 123. 
You've seen that in your packet, and Mr. Burks, if you'd like to detail that for us, please. A Premier, <coughs> Premier Builders and Developer LLC has submitted an application for a boundary line adjustment plat for lot 16, 17, and 18 of Park Hills, uh, Plat 2 of Park Hills subdivision on the west side of <coughs> South Morgan Street, across from Binkley Woods and Spectre Lake. Uh, the comprehensive plan designate the entire area as a single family resident, uh, residential and proposed modification to the boundary lines do not conflict with any of the city's future land use. The plan modifies three existing lots. Lot 18 will be reduced from 22,349 square feet to 20,178 square feet. Lot 17 will be increased from 9,012 square feet to 99 or 9,947 square feet. And lot 16 will be increased from 12,375 square feet to 13,615 square feet, exceeding the minimum requirements for the lot design standards in the R3 district. No modifications to the utility service are, is proposed as part of the change. Uh, changes in lot configuration. Uh, staff has reviewed the proposed boundary line adjustment plat and found that is. It is consistent with Chapter 410, the subdivision regulation of the Warrington Municipal Code, and does not conflict with the comprehensive plan. Okay. <clears throat> the applicant should have been here tonight. I'm not sure exactly where he's at, but right. uh, Thank you, Mr. it's Burks. pretty simple. They're just moving the lot lines. Say, this is just the lines, right? Just the lot lines on, on those three lots. And the solid line is the the requ recommended. The highlighted is what it's going to get, uh, or is it vice versa? Vice versa. Highlighted is what it is. Yeah. The original line is highlighted oh, in yellow. Gotcha. Okay. Say that again. I got the confused. original lot lines. The way they run is highlighted in yellow. So that is what it is today. That's what it is now. Yes. So the solid line is what we are reviewing. Right. That's what it's going to change to. Okay, it's, they're just making it bigger and straighter. Okay. I got a question. They got a building there on yep. that lot. On lot 18 already. Okay. So they're changing. Is that going to be within the boundaries? Yes. Of the property so, line still? Yes, it still is. The, yes. it, the building is still maintains all the appropriate setbacks on the side? Yes, it does. Okay. Yes. That's what I was wondering. Too, yes. Mr. I make a motion to approve the site plan for Park Hills boundary lines. Second that. Uh, we have a motion by Mrs. Cullum, second by Mr. Cooper to recommend approval of the Park Hills boundary line adjustment SUBD 123. Any other questions or comments? Roll call vote. Mr. Cullum? Yes. Mr. Durbin? Yes. Mr. Cooper? Yes. Mr. Cornell? Yes. Ms. Cullum? Yes. Ms. Madden? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Costello? Yes. So that motion carries uh, to recommend approval by vote of eight to zero with two absent and comes before the Board of Aldermen on June 18th. And that's the final item on our agenda. So. I make a motion to adjourn. Oh, oh. whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, yeah, well, we, we can do we can, uh, okay. we can have your report first. Yeah. We're closed now. And remember, it's moved. It's July 9th. Nine. Oh. Yeah. Oh, our next yeah, we'll uh, P and Z is July sure seven July nine. 9th. That's right. So, okay. So, any comments or questions before we make a motion? I, I'm sorry. Before we vote on our motion to adjourn. All right. We'll have voice vote. All in favor of adjournment, say I'm aye. Sorry. Who was aye. the second? Cole. Huh? Cole. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Mrs. Cullum had the oh, so motion and the somebody need a second. Oh, I'll Did second we get a second? it. Mrs. Madden. Mrs. Madden. There we go. <laughs> Thank good. you. Now it's official. All those in favor say aye. 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 aye.